Hello and welcome to the Splendor tutorial. My name is Ben Morgan and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to write a Python script that reverses the letters in a word. Let's get started. Let's change our default view from a 3D viewport to the text editor and click new text. And we'll name this text dash reverse dot py. Okay. Uh, enable the line numbering and the syntax highlighting. Next, go to Window, Toggle System Console if you're on Windows, or if you are not, if you're on Mac or something, um, you're going to have to <laughs> figure out how you do that. Okay, so, sorry about all that. Okay, what we first have to do is get our word for our object to, for our Python script to flip. So to do that, first we have to do we have to set a variable to what the input is. So um, we'll do um, input equals input. Uh, and it's, this is going to be the user input function. So input in, the user is going to type in uh, a thing. So we want to prompt the user to say that, uh, to do that. So do um, enter text. And I re always recommend doing a colon and then a space because if you don't, then they'll start typing like that, and uh, it will be very confusing for the user. Okay. Next, we have to set that input, the object that they, uh, the, yeah, the object that they entered. We have to set it to a string, or else uh, we won't be able to treat it like a string, which we have to do. So to do that, you're gonna have to set, make a new variable, and do str. We're gonna name it str equals str, using the string method. Oh, these are very bad names. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we'll change it from input to uh, user underscore input just so that we don't get these two methods confused because this is a variable and this is a method. Um, this will be the uh, <laughs> word, I guess. Um, okay, so we're going to change what they entered here into a string. So user input, control C to copy, use the string method on the user input basically to convert that into a string to tell Python that, yes, this is a string that we want to use. Okay. So next, we have to, um, we have to be able to access the uh, positions of the, um, of the string. But we won't know which position to start at because we don't know how long it is. But luckily, there is a method for that. So if we just make a variable called ling, uh, length, I guess, equals the length method of word that will basically return the um, the length of the word that they did. So say they entered Ben, that is the length of three. But something we have to keep in mind is that Python, as with most uh, programming languages, starts counting at zero. So if we want to go to the uh, end of the word, n, we're going to have to go to the length minus one. So this is the second position. Um, so we'd have to go to three minus one. So why don't we uh, just print this out real quick. Uh, print the length, just to make sure that we're on the right track. And we're going to make sure that's a string. So str length. OK, so click Run Script. And we get on our console. It'll say Enter Text. And I'll enter uh, Ben. And yes, it returns a length of three. Perfect. OK, let's save this text in my scripting folder, uh, textreverse.py is good. OK, so now we have to do a while loop. Um, but before that, we're going to have to do something else. When we, this is complicated. When you, you can't string on letters to a word. You can't have the string um, Ben, and you can't string on J-A-M-I-N. You can't do that. What you're going to have to do is make a, uh, an array of letters, and then in the end, join all those letters together. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So we have to have a while loop. So um, while length is greater than 0, uh, well, let's see. No. No, we'll do while, uh, let's see. We're going to have to do another because we don't want to decrease the length. So we'll do another variable called i, and we'll set that equal to the length. OK. Um, so 
basically what that will do is uh, just set i to the length of the word so that we don't have to decrease the length because that doesn't really make sense. So i for index, while that's greater than zero, we want to, okay, so this is where we have to make an ar array. So we're gonna have an array called final and we're gonna set it to an empty array, okay? So we're gonna have to do, what we're gonna have to do is final equals final dot append. This is how you add things to an array. And then in the parentheses, you have to go, um, you have to do, uh, let's see, str, no, uh, word at position i minus 1. So we're going to append the value at position i minus 1. So in the case that I entered ben, it would append n to the final array. And in the end, the end final array would have the values n, e, and b. And so that will be the reversed thing. Something else we have to do, though, is decrease i every time. So i minus equals 1 each time so that it will um, keep decreasing. Because, yeah, so the reason we have to do greater than 0 is because if we did greater than or equal to 0, we'd get an out-of-bounds error, and that would not make sense because... Uh, we're going to be at the one value, i is going to be one, but it's going to be taking the value of the word that we entered at the zero, th uh, the zero position. So it's going to be taking the first letter when i is one, and that's why we have to do greater than zero. Okay, so now final is going to be filled with the reversed letters of our input. Okay, so now how are we going to join that into an actual word that we can print out? Well, if we do, we have to, um, there's a method called join for an array, which basically converts um, all of the values in an array into a string. Um, and it does that using um, something in between. So, for example, I could have the array um, A, B, C, and if I did the join method, um, I'd have to have a variable called like um, example. And say I did the join method with this. Basically, what that would do is make the final array a dash b dash c. Okay, but we don't want that. What we want, <laughs> I'll just erase that. What we want is uh, for the for them to be strung together just like a normal word. So we can kind of cheat this method by making a null string. So we're going to make a variable called null, and we're going to set it equal to em an empty string. So that basically, if we do null.join uh, final, it's going to join that string, adding in this in between each letter, even though this is nothing. So basically, that will make it a final word. And now if we print null, or I'm sorry, I'm going to have to set this to a variable. So um, reversed equals, OK. Now if we print reversed, what this should do is give us the reversed uh, word of what we entered. So if I enter, uh, entered then, OK, we're getting an error. So final.append word at i minus 1. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's, we can actually, to fix that, we can look at the Blender API. So why don't we do that? Or the uh, Python API. So Python API. Okay, so if we quick search the join, or it's a, it's a pen for strings, we could see that actually why don't we just do a quick google search python append okay this is good uh, da -da -da -da. append two elements okay final dot append 
Actually, maybe you don't have to do final equals. Why don't we just do final dot append, and that might work. Uh, let's see. Then, yeah, there we go. We just had final equals final dot append, and that uh, was what was ruining, uh, ruining everything. So, enter text then, and we return neb. So it reverses the words, uh, the letters in my name, which is pretty cool. So we can enter uh, the cake is a lie, and it will do that. So this is pretty cool. You can do this to make secret messages or something like that, or just as a quick exercise for your Python brain. Um, and so yeah, I uh, hope hope uh, this was useful. I hope you learned something, and uh, please subscribe.